<laughs> I remember last time I had my astronomy stream, I was also extremely nervous. Um, uh, uh, how's it growing? Did I already ask that? I can't remember. <laughs> hi, Rosie. Hi, chat. Aaron, thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Um, today. <laughs> Yeah, that is him. That is him. He's uh, he's chilling in the in the corner. To, oh, wait, let me let me move that from uh behind the the black hole. The black hole does truly there you go. Eat everything, even the super chats. <laughs> it's not Galileo. <laughs> it's your better. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Um, but yeah, today we're gonna be having the um, I want to say part two, but it is. Um, Astronomy 201. It is the second class. Um, you fortunately graduated uh, the previous one. So, welcome to our new astronomy class. Pompasan, thank you for the super chat. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, he's my TA. He's, he's my TA. Um, yeah, but he's just here to, 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 to observe today. He's, he's here to observe my, um... <laughs> I'm so nervous. Um... I did, I did a lot of research, a lot of reading. Uh, I basically read two whole textbooks for this, more or less. Not really, like, there, there were some parts that I did skip, but, um... Yeah, um... I'll, 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 we're just gonna be uh, talking about some fun space facts today. <laughs> no, he's not the substitute teacher, he's a TA, he's the assistant. Archive one, we'll revisit this after seeing part one. How to thank you to Super Chat. Um, but yeah, so... I'm really nervous. Um... I hope I can teach you guys some entertaining stuff. Or at least maybe like give you a refresher. Or, um... Is this Space Police Rosemary part 2? <laughs> not yet, not yet. My TA looks like an Osan. He is an Osan. He's like a... Wait, how... From what century is he from? Where's my PhD? I have it. What do you mean? I still think you're the super chat. Uh, coffee, thank you for the super chat. Did you watch the Sa Saturn and Mars conjunction on the fort recently? I didn't actually. Apologies, I think I entered the wrong classroom. Oh, you might as well sit down. No, don't be shy. Don't be shy. You might as well sit down. <laughs> the 15th cent. Okay, well, I have a 600 year old Osan with me to teach me the facts. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm, I'm just stalling because I'm nervous, but, um... You looking forward to wrinkling your brain with me? Thank you, the super chat! Okay! Um, so yeah, my, my original goal was to... Make it like a bit of... I want to say, like, more complex from the last one, but I don't know if it'll necessarily be more complex. Um, some of the stuff will be sort of like similar to what we touched up on the first time. But then I also want to talk about maybe... Some of this stuff was actually really math heavy. And then I sort of like... Removed the math from it. And I just took like, um... Basically just like the facts about it. So we'll just be talking about it without the math. And it might be a bit like harder to understand without the math. So if you really like want to know more about it, I suggest you look it up. Um, forgot to do my homework. Here's my bribe. Okay, I'll, I'll give you an, an A grade. <laughs> Thank you to Super Chat. My mind is a black hole. What's me mean? I'm mine too. My mind feel like a black hole right now. Can you go to the toilet? No, you've already been five times and it's only been two minutes. Gosho, <laughs> thank you to Super Chat. Uh, Felix, thank you. Uh, Lily, thank you. Okay, anyways, uh... <laughs> Anyways, uh, shall we get started? Again, this is a reminder, this isn't no real, um... There's no real, like, formatting to this. <laughs> but I'll try my best to make it as, uh, cohesive as possible. Crap, sorry, I'm late, Miss Lovelock. Did I miss any important material? Yeah, yeah, you did. You missed, um, two really important things that are gonna be on the final. And, and, and this is basically the only class before the final, because we're already in the final seasons. So, um... The finals will be right after this class. <laughs> right after this class. I'm ready to fail this class. <laughs> Saka, thank you to Super Chat. Okay, um... <sighs> is this gonna be in the test? Yeah, it is. <laughs> so basically, um... For this... For this session, I wanted to talk a bit more about, um... 
I don't need to be... What's the word? Is it a doomer? I don't want to be a doomer or anything, but... One thing that I thought would be interesting to talk about would be... Um, the different kind of ways that the Earth might... Perish? <laughs> that the Earth might per might perish? Um... Doomer? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm being a doomer right now. <laughs> I thought that would be fun! I thought that would be fun! Nice goodbye, Earth. <laughs> Um, did you know that the pressure in the center of Jupiter is so great that it could theor theoretically rain diamonds? Ra yeah, I heard about that. Wait, was it Jupiter? I heard about that for... Was it ne Neptune or Uranus? Actually, I can't remember, but I did hear about that. Um, but yeah, and then out there, I wanted to talk a bit about, about, um... Just a little fun facts about, uh, Mars and then Venus. And then also, I wanted to talk about... I might, I might talk about like, um, meteors and stuff like that. Maybe, maybe if I can like find like a place to fit it in. And last but not least, I really want to talk about a bit more about cosmology, which is about uh like 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 uh sort of a bit of like the study of the. <laughs> I sound like one of those um actually kind of nerds right now. <laughs> it's not my like, goal. Oh. <laughs> Which is the study of the beginning of the universe and like finding out more stuff about it and like more about like the universe and its size and any interesting facts about it. I do for real. I don't want to sound like a nerd. Oh, I sound cool for real. Okay, okay. I want to be one of those like down to earth teachers, you know, like that that everyone like respects because you're so cool. Well, Matt be on the final exam, I might forego the facts and need the math to make up for the last marks. <laughs> Who says that? Who's like, I wish there was math on the exam? No one says that. <laughs> Snowling, thank you to Super Chat. I'm Pac, Professor Lovelock, for real? Okay, well, as long as my fellow students um, think I'm cool, now I feel confident. <laughs> I literally went out of my way to not have like any math on this because I like who would want that, right? No one wants that. No one's here for math, so I didn't put any math on it. Plus it would just be like too complicated for nothing. It would turn into like a math class or something, you know? None of that, none of that. <laughs> um Nobody told me the rosebuds were a doomsday cult, where's my pudding? <laughs> doomsday cult? No, I'm just a doomer. Or whatever the word is. It's called cool, an actual nerd, and I love actual nerds. I'm a woman with a math degree after all. Oh, oh, nice, let's go. <laughs> Thank you to Super Chahal. Thank you. Okay, um, let's begin. So, I did say that the first time. Oh, let me know if the BGM is too loud, by the way. Lo fi, space, hip hop. Let me know if it's too loud. Um. Yeah, so the first thing I wanted to cover was more or less... It sounds fine? Okay, nice. Was more or less... <laughs> a bunch of different ways that the Earth could, you know, potentially perish. Um... <laughs> Starting it all strong, but let's, let's go with that. Let's go with that one. Um... So, you know, last time I did talk a bit about, like, a bit bro more, like, broader general knowledge. And this is also kind of, like, general knowledge. I feel like parts of these have floated around everywhere. And you might have heard a bit about this. Um, starting with the end. <laughs> um. You're too young to die? Yeah, me too. Um, anyways, as, as we talked about it, um, last time, I talked about lots of, like, solar, um, storms, um, on the sun that, you know, that affect the Earth fairly of often. And, um, typically, you know, these, I talked about it last time again, but these, uh, like, solar storms tend to, to shoot out, like, high energy radiation and, you know, like, plasma towards the Earth. And, um, usually, usually, we're safe from these because, you know, the Earth's magnetic field redirects this, um, electrified plasma. <laughs> this electrified plasma to the North and the South Poles. Um, where the particles actually fall into our atmosphere. And, you know, those pretty, 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 um, auroras that you see are actually caused by these. Which is mostly why you can see them, like, really north of the Earth or really south. Um... But yeah, but 
you know, there's there's a lot of uh, different types of these uh, uh, solar storms, and some of them can be a lot stronger and a lot more dangerous than other ones. And instead of you know causing a lot of pretty pretty skies, they could cause a lot of trouble. <laughs> um. And um yeah, yeah, but 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 if one of these storms, you know, would happen like perfectly, in in a way that um this these uh. Sorry, I'm just really nervous. Also, I haven't been like feeling too good for a few days, so I'm trying my best to to um roll with it. <laughs> I hope it, I hope um I can I can make uh what's what's the word? Just, things are not coming to my mind at all because of that. Just this to what I want to do today. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I got this. Thank you. Um, and yeah. So um. Uh, typically, you know, like larger storms like this can uh, affect, you know, like like the pow like power that we have um, on Earth. But if like one of these storms were to happen perfectly, well, <laughs> we might get a lot of harsher side effects than just those those pretty skies. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's a lot of um, celestial um, events that happen in space that could lead to the potential extinction of our planet. And the human race, but I'm not a human, so. <laughs> Ghost of Puma, thank you for the super chat. Science fell in love and Professor Rosemi tried to prove it. Oh, is that the anime? <laughs> thank you for the super chat. Uh, Aaron, thank you for the super chat. The Earth's untimely end will be due to overpowering cuteness from Rosemi Sama. Thank you. Um. There you go. Also, if you can hear some noise, sorry, I have my window open for like the first time in a long time. So if you can hear the cars outside, let me know and I'll be sure to close my window. <laughs> um But yeah, as I said, there's a lot of other social events that could, you know, lead to the extinction extinction of our planet. And um, you know, other than the obvious, you know, stuff like comets or, or asteroids, which have already hit and affected our, our planet. Quite a lot in the past. Um, thankfully, uh, I mean, you know, the humanity still managed to, to <laughs> humanity still managed to flourish given um, what has happened in the past of our history's plan uh, in our planet's history. Um, but those are obvious ones that you know could just kind of like wipe it out. Thankfully, um, our technology is good enough that we would probably see it coming at least a long time. Long ways away. I don't know if we could potentially stop it, but we could at least see it um, coming. Um, but there's also stuff like um, like I previously talked in the last in the last um, stream, like supernovas, um, which I mentioned were uh, like the like huge like stellar explosions that you know sort of like affect things in a really large radius around the sun. I think they're usually it's usually around like a hundred hundred light year radius, so. <laughs> Yeah, we would kind of be screwed, but um, stuff like that could also, you know, kind of uh, mess up, mess us up. Um, and if you think about like events that will happen, that like we have proof that is eventually gonna happen, there's actually quite a lot of them. There's actually quite a lot of events that could lead to the extinction of our planet, which is kind of scary if you think about it. But don't worry, none of these will happen. Anytime soon at all. <laughs> no, no time soon at all. Yeah, it doesn't have to be some kind of like huge explosion or storm or anything, but um, you know, due to the nature of the Earth, um, like stuff like um, like the Earth's orbit and like the variation and its like actual tilt and stuff like that, um, we have a lot of like glacial periods on. This earth, which you might have heard about before, um, but you know, even something like that could be enough to wipe out all of humanity. <laughs> I'm not jinxing the end of time. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Um, yeah, that could wipe out all of humanity. But what do I care? I'm a plant. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd probably still die too. <laughs> um. 
Oh yeah, I just wanted to mention this because it's a cool fact. It's not really like too much related to this, the space itself, but um, in about like I think it's like 200 million years or so, like the, all the continents will sort of like merge together and create one big continent, which is pretty cool to think about. But I don't think we'd be around because that's in like 200 million years or so. <laughs> Um, other stuff that would, that are, you know, going to happen. Are you... <laughs> Pangea season 2 was gone! <laughs> um... But yeah, other stuff that will happen. For example, um... There's a... Red Dwarf Sun. I think... What, what, what was his name? Like, Goose or something. Gleese? Gleese? There's a bunch of numbers too, like Gleese 7... 7 something. Please, wait, let me look it up. Oh, Glee 710? 710? <laughs> yeah, Glee Howard. Glee Howard, the, the, the red dwarf sun. <laughs> um, it's actually projected to pass um, near our sun in about 1.3 million. Uh, my favorite is the big slur. Basically, the world ends due to some statistical fluctuation of quantum energy states somewhere in the universe. <laughs> the big slur. <laughs> Why does that sound like a like a promo at 7-Eleven? Like like the big the big slurp. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Um, yeah, which is uh um projected to pass next to the sun in 1.3 million years, which you know has the potential to sort of like mess uh to, to send sh uh, to, to showers of comets um. In the inner solar system for millions of years and <laughs> triggering a lot of uh, bad stuff, a lot of uh, icy pieces of space debris and all that kind of stuff. Um, lots of comets that would potentially wipe us out, also. <laughs> um, but other than that, there's also stuff like, um, the, the intensity of uh, the solar radiation sort of increases. Um, it's, it's, it's been increasing, and obviously, since I, I also talked about that last, last stream, it's been increasing. But something like that will, you know, sort of cause there to be, um, by a pretty complex phenomenon. I'm not gonna get too in-depth on it, it's pretty complex. But it'll cause less, uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and then, and then stuff like, Photosynthesis! Photosynthesis will no longer be possible. But that's in like 600 million years, so, you know... <laughs> no time soon, no time soon! Yeah, but, um... Plants will sort of not be able to do photosynthesis anymore. No more photosynthesis from Rosami. And then, basically, you guys will die. Plus, you know, you know what they say, plants are really important for life, you know? Because animals eat plants. The small animals eat plants, and then the big animals eat the small animals. So basically, Rosami is the most important thing on this planet, but... When they won't be able to do photosynthesis, this will be too sad. It'll be too sad. <laughs> Can we die together? Oh my god, this is sounding like really like... Doomy. This is sounding really doomy. I'll get out of it soon. I'm almost done about the, with the doomy part. Don't worry about it. That's true. <laughs> Don't agree with me. Don't agree with me. Um... Um... And yeah, um... And, you know, let's assume... Okay, these are all happening in like 200 million years, 300 million years, 600 million years. Let's assume that we make it to 1 billion years in the future. It's kind of crazy to think about it, but... Um, still, like, uh, solar luminosity um, would be about like 10% higher now than it is. Which means that basically the entire ocean would evaporate. The entire ocean would evaporate. Like, there would be no more ocean. And then... Earth itself would end up being... Um, Earth itself... Uh, will you be talking about how Thanos could wipe out humanity with his Infinity Gauntlet? Yeah, that's near the end of the... of the... the lecture today. I'll be talking about Thanos. I'm a big fan, actually. <laughs> doomsday scenarios are death as a result of Rosemary's death. So is this a doomsday suicide? No! I'm literally saying facts right now. These are straight up facts. There would be no ocean to dive into tonight. <laughs> oh, thank you for joining, by the way. Um, yeah, but let's say, uh, yeah, yeah, we make it to one billion years, the ocean would evaporate, and, um, 
the earth would actually, as we know it, be hotter in a billion years than um, how Venus is right now. The earth would be hotter than Venus. Isn't that crazy to think about? Yeah, and then um, I mentioned this last time also, but then we would sort of get eaten by the earth in 7.5 billion years to say we make it there. The earth would get eaten by the sun. Um, um. <laughs> but let's not be doomers, okay? Let's not be doomers. Let's look at a few other planets a bit closer to home. Maybe there's a future for us there, right? Right? <laughs> oh yeah, another really cool fact. Um. I just wanted to share was actually um as more recent news um scientists have found um the closest black hole to earth uh, which i believe is 1500 1500 uh 1500 light years away from the earth and um they found it out due to like the 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 uh behavior of its uh red giant star next to it but i'll talk a little bit more about that later on about stuff like that later on we'll talk about that later on um, so let's talk about other planets a bit closer to home Because now we know how, how doomed the Earth is <laughs> This is not a doomsday cult <laughs> Let me drink some water So, um, um, um we've heard that, that, that Mars has, has water, right? Right? Mars has water, right? No, well, kind of, but <laughs> it's it's all ice. It's all ice. Mars is just a big Iceland. Remember, guys. Oh, I I don't mean Iceland like the country. I mean, <laughs> remember, guys, the Earth and everything, and it will perish. So we might as well enjoy life and forfeit all physical goods to Rosemary Poopy. Thank you for the super chat. No, I don't mean the country. Like Iceland, Iceland or Greenland, Iceland. Um, Marsland. <laughs> Icelandic people are Martians? No! <laughs> yeah, it's true. Matt Damon did grow potatoes on Mars. That literally happened. That was an actual fact that has happened in our history. Um, so continuing on, uh, uh, a man um, who landed on Mars named uh, Matt Damon, he grew potatoes on Mars. <laughs> You take my lunch money? No! Soldier, thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Class is noted, chat. I think Professor Lovok is cute. <gasps> Me? <laughs> Yuki, thank you for the super chat. Wait a second, is this a geography course? No, it's, it's a course about potatoes. What do you mean? Um. <laughs> but yeah, Mars is cold. Mars is very, very cold. And all the water... Which it does have water, which looks promising. It's pretty promising that it has water, but it's all frozen as ice. And Mars is actually extremely radioactive. It doesn't have any oxygen, as you might know. So we couldn't even be able to breathe on, our, on, on Mars. Um, the gravity on Mars is also about a third of what it is on the Earth. Which means that there would be like a lot of stress put on our body. Um, and you know, stuff like our, our blood. Our blood would circulate really poorly and we would lose our muscle mass, which means that you'd have to like exercise a ton to make it up. But I love to exercise. Pog, I love to exercise. So maybe Mars is not that bad at all, right? Right? Do you think we'll have people living on Mars in our lifetime? I think so. I think so. Maybe like in like five decades, maybe. <laughs> no, not exercise. <laughs> Wait, I mentioned that uh, Mars was radioactive, right? So that means that you'd be basically be exposed to like 50 times the radiation that we have on Earth. Which means that you'd have to get uh uh SPF SPF one billion thousand to not get a sunburn. <laughs> this is because Mars's atmosphere is a lot less dense than um Earth's. In the atmosphere of, of Earth, and um, it has a very weak magnetosphere, which um, causes a lot of the radiation from space to touch the surface of the planet. <laughs> and the the magnetosphere is basically like the region around a planet. It's uh, 
that is dominated by the planet's mag magnetic, 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 magnetic field. I'm sorry, I'm stumbling on my words because I'm really nervous. This is how I am when I'm giving like a a presentation. I get really num nervous and I start to, to stumble on my words. <laughs> Stop! Um, <laughs> um, and then yeah, as I mentioned, this pulls like the radiation away from from the surface and towards the poles, and it's basically like the same way that we protect ourselves from weaker uh, solar flares on Earth, but it's a lot, lot stronger on Mars, unfortunately. So basically, if you live on Mars, you'd basically you know want to live in something like underground. Or in like a... Like a... Like a... Like a mound or something, you know? Like... Like like you wanna have like your house underneath like a bunch of like dirt or something, basically. To get away from this radioactivity. Ah, uh, thank you for joining. Welcome! Oh, also, um... Nerds to me? I'm not a nerd. Stop! Also, basically, um... A fun fact is that Mars used to have a lot of vol volcanoes. You might have heard of it, that Mars had a lot of active volcanoes. But it doesn't have it anymore. All the, vo the volcanoes on Mars are no longer active. They are no longer active. And um, this is because that the heat stored inside the planet when it was formed has been lost. And uh, the outer crust of Mars is actually too thick to allow for molten rock from below to reach the surface. Um, but a long, 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 long time ago... No, yeah, no, no volcanoes, no beaches. Mars is not looking too good. <laughs> um, but a long time ago, eruptions um built these enormous volcanoes and piles of thick ash, and um these volcanoes played, you know, a pr probably a big, a pretty big role in melting these ice deposits that you see um on Mars nowadays. So all of all of these, this ice is actually um. Not frozen. It was actually like like lots of water before, and um, yeah, Mars was pretty cool back then. Well, minus you know the ton of volcanoes, but Mars is now not cool or too cool because it's very icy. <laughs> we could make it cool, maybe one day, but for now it kind of sucks. Taking notes, Miss Professor Love. Oh my God, Alvin Wayne, I'm nervous. <laughs> Alvin is actually my TA number two. I have two TAs. Martians and Shavel. So how about how about how about something like like Venus? How about Venus? It's icy like Professor Lovelock. Yeah, it's Mars is icy like me. I got I got that that drip. <laughs> um. Well, as you might know, Venus is also a no go. Venus. Venus's atmosphere is actually, um, 97% CO2. Therefore, making it 93% uh, more de dense than the Earth's atmosphere. And making it, actually, the hottest planet in our solar system. But you wouldn't think about it because it's not the closest planet to the sun, right? But it is the hottest planet in our solar system. And, you know, being on the surface would just instantly kill you because of the high pressure. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be really wild. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, an interesting fact about Venus is that Venus spins uh, clockwise on its axis. This is probably because at some point, uh, like a heavy space body sort of like hit it and caused it to spin in another direction. <laughs> so now it's upside down, basically. So if you think about it, Venus is actually... Australia. Venus is basically Australia. And it makes sense. It makes sense. There's probably some portal in Australia that leads you straight to Venus. That's the only explanation for these creepy deaf spider aliens. <laughs> these deaf, like, molten flame spider aliens. You get it? <laughs> um. Oh, and another interesting fact is, um, the only other planet to spin in a weird direction is, uh, Uranus. Because probably something somewhere happened to it where something, like, hit it and caused it to go off its, uh, spinny spinny. <laughs> off its, uh, 
of its uh, course of, of spinning. So, um, I, I think... If I'm not mistaken, Uranus spins on its uh, side? I believe it spins on its side. Uh -huh. and, and Venus sp spins upside down. Just kind of funny to think about it. <laughs> so yeah, all this to say that Venus is also... Definitely also un... Un? Inhab inhabitable? I believe that's the word. Unless you're an Australian death spider. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Venus is a break dancer. <laughs> So Mars equals Iceland, Venus equals Australia. <laughs> um, I I wanted to talk about about um asteroids and stuff like that, but most of what I have about it is actually like pretty common knowledge. It's basically pretty common knowledge. So maybe I'll get to it like near the end if we have some extra time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, should I? Should I talk about it? Tell us anyways, really? Okay, 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 okay. It's nice to have a refresher. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's true. Okay, so, um... Cool space rocks! I'm a big fan of cool space rocks. <laughs> Such a cute space nerd. I'm not! I'm not! I'm, I'm doing my job! I'm a teacher. Um... <laughs> But yeah, asteroids are basically they're um, rocky objects that revolve around the sun, but they're too small to be called um, planets. And there are millions, there's millions of asteroids in our solar system, um, range, um, ranging in size from like uh, super super tiny, like a like a super tiny, you know, like a few hundred miles, <laughs> uh, to um, a few several feet. So it could be tiny, like a few several feet, to up to like hundreds of miles. But basically, its own almost planet. Mm -hmm. Almost its own planet. Um, and these asteroids are usually they tend to stick in there. Like, there's three regions in our solar system where they tend to to, to stick around. So you won't usually see them outside of those um regions. But yeah. Uh, there's also, most of them lie in the, the ring between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter Where there's like a huge ring of where most of the asteroids are in our solar system And, uh... <laughs> this asteroid belt actually has, I think... More than 200 or so? Of asteroids that are larger than, uh... I believe like 60 miles? 60 miles? So they're pretty darn big. Like, they're pretty big. Um, but as for smaller asteroids, there's like... There's like, the like two millions of them that are like... You know, like, larger than like... 3,000 feet. So yeah, there's a lot of tiny, tiny ones. There's a few really big ones, and there's a few tiny, tiny ones. What is my favorite planet name in Japanese? Um... Huh... I don't know. Hmm. I didn't think about that one. Kase. No, I, I don't know. Kinse? I don't know. They're all pretty cool. Chikyu all the way. Chikyu is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Um... And, uh, wait, where was that? Oh my god, I, I lost my track. I lost my track! Resume is your favorite. I'm not the name of a planet. Not yet, at least. <laughs> Geology rocks, but Resume astronomy streams are out of this world. The chemistry between Resume and the space is a reaction made in the stars. <laughs> All next is thank you to Super Chat. Thank you. Oh, where was I? I was, I was talking about, uh... Asteroids, right? As asteroids. Um, and yeah, asteroids are actually they're dust particles um, that were formed in the early uh, years of the solar system, and that basically collided, you know, and they formed larger clumps, and and um, 
These would grow by attracting more and more dust with their gravitational fields. And some grew, as I said, some of them are basically big enough to be like its own little tiny planet. <laughs> and, um, and some actually did, I believe, become planets. And some of them did become planets. And some of them stayed as asteroids. Mm -hmm. Um... Okay. Now we're getting to the part that um, I was really excited to do a bit of research on. I was really excited to do a lot of research on this part. So um, now we're going to be talking a bit more about cosmology. Um, what is my opinion on Pluto? Um, justice for Pluto. <laughs> What do you guys think about Pluto? I kind of... Like, I feel like... I don't know. Pluto got done dirty? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah Pluto... Yeah, Pluto is cute. You mean Pluto's fake? No! Yeah, Pluto's cute and Pluto deserves... That's probably... Like, Pluto's probably sad after what happened. Yeah, I would... I would, I would stand up for Pluto. <laughs> Pluto's cute and small. <laughs> Joe, thank you to Super Chat. Thank you. What do you mean? Isn't Pluto a dog? What? Pluto is a dog? Went from the smallest in its class to the biggest. That is true. That is true if you think about it. Oh, you mean Mickey Mouse is the <laughs> I was like, wait, Pluto the dog? That that rings some bells, but what is that from? Just this trip, Pluto. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just not. I'm, why would I remember Mickey Mouse's dog's name? Come on. Um, but yeah, I wanna, I wanna talk about some cosmology. Um, and, uh, cosmology is basically the study of the cosmos, um, and more specifically, more or less the origin of the universe. He's in Kingdom Hearts, that is true. Pluto the planet is in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> the planet is... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just too used to it. <laughs> Um... Um, yeah, so, uh... Um... Yeah, I talked very, very slightly about, like, the origin of the universe last time, but I wanted to maybe talk about a bit more... in detail parts about it. You don't remember Pluto the dog's name, and you call yourself an astrologer. <laughs> no! <laughs> Cosmos Mystery Ever Miguel, thank you to Super Chan, thank you! Um, so yeah, so, um, there's a few cool facts that we didn't get to mention last time, so I just like to cover them a bit this time. And there were some, like, really, like, math-intensive parts in this, but, um, I kind of stripped it away, so I kind of took it away. So if you want to look more into it, be my guest. <laughs> be my guest, but, um, it's basically just a lot of, like... Being like, okay, but there's this and this, and we have this in our equation. So if it was like this, then this doesn't make sense. So basically, it's like this. So basically, it's yeah, it's just like more or less explaining stuff with math. Um, today we abandoned math. <laughs> yeah, yeah, only for today though, only for today. Um, so yeah, um, there's something really cool that I wanted to talk about, but first let's 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 talk about something a bit like lighter. Like, have you ever looked up at the sky and been like, why is it dark? Why why is the why is the night sky dark? You know? Am I any good at high level math? Like, what 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 would you consider high level math? Like, because of obsidian, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because of all the chocolate? Yeah! Because Obsidia ate too much chocolate. Calculus? Differential equations? I'm like... 
All right. My math has always been like one of my weaker subjects, I think. I guess actually I feel like any calculus is pretty high level. I feel like for for math like Math has always been like one of the subjects that I had to put like all like the most studying in. Like a lot of other other stuff came to me like pretty easily, or I could like remember stuff pretty easily. But for some reason, I always had to like study a lot of math. Like I had to study it a lot more than like my other subjects. But um, I'm not like if I do study it, like I'm not like terrible terrible at it. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Didn't I do an integral in stream? Yeah, but that was like a pretty easy one. That wasn't like too hard. Yeah, I did I did do some integrals on stream. Statistics is the best math. I I, I would uh, I would argue on that. I would argue with you on that. <laughs> you hated math until calculus, really, really. Um, but yeah, cringe stats is not real math. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Um, but yeah. Um. So basically, why like the like like space, why space is more or less you know like very dark is, well, sparing you from again all those boring equations, like basically, scientists were like, well, let's say we had all the following, the sky would be infinitely bright. All of the following being, um, let's say, um, the, our line of sight of of stars in 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 the universe. Was now blocked by other stars. So if you actually think about it, like, let's say here from Earth, like our our, our view of like another star might be blocked by by the sun or something. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, um, um, let's say if we had like um, the let's say a lot of like the stars were as bright as they could be, as as they were as bright as they could be, then also maybe the 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 night the night the, the, the space would be infinitely bright. Um, and also, if we knew that the universe was infinitely old, and that um was infinitely old and infinitely large, then maybe also the the universe would be infinitely bright. But we know that's not true. We know that's not true. We know that's not true. And also, that we we know that um the flux of light um from a distant source is. Given the inverse law of equation, so basically the brightness um of the night sky would also be affected that by that. But basically, to simple it down, to simple it down um really easily, um we know we, and we and we talked about this last time. We know that the universe does in fact have a finite age. It's not infinite. Um, it, I mean there was a point where. The universe was was born, more or less, as as we know the universe as we know it was born, and um, because of that, um, and we also mentioned it previously, but um, you know, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of light years for the light of stars to reach us, um, which is also interesting, interestingly called horizon distance. Uh, so, um, because of that, yeah, the, the, the space is, is not infinitely bright. It's actually pretty dark. <laughs> Baby universe. <laughs> now, um, cosmology is, uh, you know, in, in cosmology, um, lots of scientists want to measure the matter density in the universe. And this could help us figure out the expansion rate of the universe. And other important stuff like uh, spatial curvature. Now, talking about spatial curvature, um, we know that the universe is expanding. That's a given, and and this has been proven. Um, but we don't know in what shape the universe is in. It could be, and and since we know that it's it's expanding, um, basically it's one of the three options of the following options. The universe could be a sphere. The universe could be a sphere. So it could be. Round? It could be flat like a sheet of paper. I think that's the scariest one. Isn't that the scariest one? Like thinking that the universe is like flat like a sheet of paper. And uh, it's a rose. <laughs> and um, the last option is that it could be sort of like a like, like a horse saddle. You know, it could sort of like look a bit like a horse saddle. 
So it's one of those three options. We don't know which one it is. But if we had a bit more information, we could determine like the shape of it, which would be really good to to know more about our universe. But unfortunately, what do you mean flat? What do you mean like me? Huh? Say <laughs> you. Um. But yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> I do think that the scariest one is is definitely that it would be like flat like a sheet of paper. I don't know, like I feel like when I think about the universe, I can I can imagine it being like a sphere, but maybe it's not like a sphere. Who knows? Who called our professor that? Yeah, the disrespect. I'll kick you out of my class. I'll ban you from my class forever. Um, yeah, so, so, if we had the spatial curvature, we, it would be a lot easier to know the shape of our universe. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, yeah, this would, like, help us find out a lot more details about the universe. Is the universe resting on the back of turtles? What? On the back of turtles? Is this, like, a reference to something? Am I, am I, am, is my brain not putting it together? I feel like it is. The universe has big bazongas? Well, I don't know about big bazongas, but the universe does have bazinga. <laughs> oh, it's a reference to mythology, really? <laughs> um But yeah, but yeah, um and, and, um, one other thing that cosmologists really want to figure out is, um... Do you believe in gravity? <laughs> yeah? Why would I say no? What? A crasher, thank you for the super chat! I know the shape of the universe. I'm looking at her right now. Oh my god! Wait! Oh, life form comes from me? Are you guys like all living on me? A rose race. Me? Oh, I miss universe? Wait, aren't those like like Stacy's? Or, 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 or are you saying that you live on me? <laughs> Thank you, the super chat. Um Yeah, um one thing, however, that we do know about our, our universe is that um, the universe is... And this is an approximation. Um, that the universe is approximately 68% dark energy and 27% dark matter. Um, but what is dark matter? I'm a Stacy? Hey, thanks. <laughs> um, but what is dark matter? Whereas me, no one, there's a real champagne supernova in the sky. It belongs to... Type La SN and astronomers use them to discover dark energy. Champagne? Why is it called champagne? Um, the universe going through a phase? <laughs> it's not a phase, mom. <laughs> um, well, what is so, so? So, what exactly is dark matter? Well, if we find out um the exact um matter density, we could find out what our what the universe is made of. Of it is made of. It's made of... Of... <laughs> um, and of this density, how much of it is allocated to stuff like stars? And um, of this dark matter, um, how much of it is stuff like black holes and stellar remains and other particles that are um, too dim to see? And you know, talking about too dim to see, well, that's basically how you understand what dark matter is. Um, so basically, we have... This might be a bit complicated, some terms I'm throwing at you now, but... We have baryonic matter, which are heavy subatomic particles like neutrons and protons and, and, and um, other particles. But in space, matter is not baryonic. Um, we have non-baryonic dark matter in space also. Uh, right down, thank you to Super Chat. We have a uh, non-baryonic dark matter. Um... And what exactly is this? Well, it's basically matter that doesn't absorb 
um, emit any or scatter any light of any wavelength at all. So basically, it's matter that, that we cannot see. We cannot see it. And the only way to find matter, uh, dark matter like this is to sort of look for its uh, gravitational influence on visible matter. So, for example, if we're looking at the orbital speed of stars in um, sort of like spiral shaped galaxies, then that's the pull on visible matter that it has. Um, and and um, actually, dark matter was was not found too long ago. It wasn't found too long ago. Um, it was an astronomer that was actually calculating um, the the, the velocity in uh, cluster galaxies, and and they found out that the gravitational attraction was not enough to hold everything together. So they were like, "What's going on, bro?" Well, how is this? My, my math... <laughs> my math is incorrect, bro. This can't be. But he was like, wait, my math is actually right. So, um... You know, he figured out that, um... The, this gravitational attraction was also caused by dark, dark matter. And, um... Without dark matter, a lot of, like, galaxies in, in the cluster that he was looking at would have just been, like, flung out into the void! And, um, that's how... That's how we found out about dark matter. Mm hmm or and or I guess you could say I guess you could say what what's the matter what's the matter with that <laughs> um well we know that um the density of non uh, baryonic dark matter is is at least is at least four times as dense as um normal baryonic matter um that you know us or our planets or the stars are made of. Mm -hmm. And, um... And, um, 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 um... <laughs> oh. You'd love to have me as your astronomy teacher, thanks. <laughs> um... Sorry, give me a second, I need to... I need to take a second to breathe. My, my mind is, like, all over the place. If I was your professor, you would have aced all your college courses? Well, this is like... I don't know. I don't know. I actually... I was reading a lot of, like, textbooks. And a lot of the information wasn't, like, that... that hard. Um... But I, I think it really depends on, like, the textbook that you're reading. Some of them... Some of it is, like, pretty, like, straightforward. And some of it was, like, really hard. Uh, did I ever want to be a teacher? Not exactly. I don't think I would be a good teacher, so I never wanted to be one. But kids do love me, so may maybe I would have been a good teacher. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I would have been a good teacher. Um, can you explain? Matter baby? Oh! Oh! What's the matter baby? Right? Wait, did I get it? <laughs> Thank you to Super Chat. Read Stephen Baxter's book there about a universe where dark matter life forms are at war with. Oh my god, that sounds really cool! Thank you for the Super Chat. I'll look that up. <laughs> um. Oh yeah. Uh, we also know. We also know that the universe is um homogeneous and isotropic. Tropic, isotropic. And, well, what that means is basically... Last time, we learned that the universe is expanding, right? We learned that the universe is expanding and that's proven. Well... Every point in the universe is expanding at the same rate. Right? It's not like one point in the universe is expanding at a quicker rate than the rest, right? It's all expanding at the same rate. Oh, on this edition of Cosmos, bros... Sagan explains how dark matter is spooky? Second? Me? Who? What? <laughs> Johnny, thank you to Super Chat. Um, and that's basically what I'm saying is that uh, galaxies in the universe are separating from each other at pretty much the same rate. They're they're separating from each other at the same rate. It's all like 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 take a pizza dough, right? Take a pizza dough and like stretch it. It's all being stretched at the same rate. <laughs> I don't think that's a good metaphor, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, well, that also means that 
the density and, and structure of our universe is pretty much uniform. So this is assuming, of course, that you look at the universe from a bit further away. Like obviously, if you take like a magnifying glass and you look at the universe in like one point, and then you like compare it with another point, you'll be like, but that's that's not the same thing here and there. Like if you look at the universe from a bit further away, you'll notice that the universe pretty much looks the same, um, in different in different parts of it, and it's all expanding at the same rate. That's what it means to be uh that the universe is homogeneous and isotropic. Mm -hmm. I guess that means we live in a really big pizza. <laughs> Um, and, and, and basically, if you put yourself in the universe and you look at it from far enough away, you'll, you'll notice the same thing in no matter what direction you look at it. I mean, that's given that you have like super mega robot American bald eagle eyesight, of course. <laughs> Did I miss the electron space pasta? <laughs> thank, thank you to super chat. Um, so... Basically, this makes our existence or our planet even less significant, right? Uh, no offense, by the way. <laughs> now, wouldn't that mean that... Yeah, there should be... There should be aliens out there, right? There should be aliens out there, right? With billions of stars in our galaxy and billions of other galaxies. Why are there no intelligent life forms, you know? Well, all we have is theories, re really. We only have theories. We don't have any concrete. Because. <laughs> we don't have any concrete explanation, but a few of the more popular ones um, is, you know, that there might be life forms, but. And that life form. Like, having life forms might be something that's pretty common to come across. Because it's a given that there's... That there's, um... Other life forms somewhere in the universe. But maybe it's that intelligence itself is hard to come across. Maybe that's something that's hard to develop. Mm hmm Or... Or obviously there's a lot of like sci-fi-ish... Sci-fi-ish explanations. Such as, you know, maybe like... Before like they can contact us. Maybe like... Civilizations self-destruct from being... I don't know, because they're too advanced. Or... Or maybe, maybe they just don't want to interrupt... You know, lesser developed... Um, civilizations. Maybe that's also another reason. Mm hmm Either way, thinking of a cool alien resume... Is enough to keep me excited for future prospects. <laughs> oh. The Dark Forest Theory is the spookiest one. The Dark Forest Theory? What is that one? Let me look at them. Dark Forest Theory. Many social teams that did not support the numbers of civilizations. Uh, all life desires to stay alive. There is no way to know if other life forms can or will destroy you if given a chance. Lacking assurances, the safest option for any species is to annihilate other life forms before they have a chance to do the same. So basically, are you saying that whenever they find another life form, they just kill each other? So they're all just killing each other? So that's why we haven't found, we haven't had been contacted by the Bogos, and that maybe one day they'll kill us too if they find us? <laughs> I don't remember the name, but you know the theory that. Atoms, our galaxies, universe is all on their own, or what? Or that if we zoomed out our galaxy, our universe enough, it's also just an atom of some cosmic being. Oh, that's interesting to think about. I don't think I've heard that one. That one kind of freaks me out because that means that things are just like there's so many. Like that just makes us even smaller. That's actually crazy. Oh, thank you for the super chat. I believe that we will not be visited by aliens until the day we can talk about Uranus without snickering like children. I am still guilty of that? Like the... The planet? Oh... Thank you, the super chat. Thank you! Um... <laughs> um... Yeah, that's... 
this basically... All that I had for today, I hope... You... Um, learned something interesting from it. <laughs> I hope you learned something interesting from it. I put a lot of research into this. I read so many textbooks. <laughs> I read so many textbooks and a lot of this stuff just... Wasn't, I feel, that appealing. Some of it was, but it was mad heavy. Some of it, I was like, it's not... It's too, way too complex. Um... But yeah, those are some interesting uh, stuff that I found, or at least that I found interesting, and I hope that you also did. And if you knew it, I hope the f refresher was nice. If you didn't, I hope I'm glad that you learned something. Uh, Soupy, thank you for the super chat. The purpose to yield the number N of technically advanced civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy. Hmm? Oh, there's a there's a equation for that. Thank you for the super chat! Awesome stream, it's easy to tell you put a lot of effort... Uh, in, in, effort into making it both informi informative and entertaining. I learned a bunch. Thanks, Professor Lovelock. Tech, thank you for the super chat! Thank you! Oh my god, I'm like so out of it that I can like barely even like speak properly today. <laughs> I hope that wasn't too bad too. I was really nervous and... I just haven't been like feeling too great for... a few days. Um... Are you familiar with the concept of entropy and how it could be related to a way in how the universe will end? I know of entropy. Um, I think I would have to refresh myself on that though. Thank you, Monsuch. One class ticket for the Professor Rosemi. Any homework? <laughs> Rosemi, thank you. Um, no homework, but your test is coming up tomorrow. <laughs> I hope you study well for it. Thank you so much for the Yaka, Rosemi. Thank you, thank you. If there is intelligent life from out there, then we should teach them how to do <laughs> Kaiba, thank you for the super chat. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the cute and informative stream, Miss Lava. Hearing all this astronomy talk makes me wish I had a telescope. Me too! The only telescope I've ever used in my life, my best friend had a telescope. And I used it once. And then I never got to use it ever again. I was supposed to, but then she moved away. Yeah, and I always wanted to get one myself. She encouraged me to get one, I just... I think they're pretty expensive, but I've always wanted to get a telescope. But isn't it... I, I, I don't know, can you like really see a lot with it? Like, does it depend on the day? Or like, could you like, just look in the sky at any time? The theory that I support is that the universe is very young and... And... And is early in the period where it can support life. It's likely that we might be the first intelligent... Species. Hmm... That is an interesting theory. It's just like... And a lot of the stuff that I read was like... Well, we're nothing special. Like... And maybe we really are just that lucky. And the only... Uh... Life forms that have... Developed yet. But if you consider the fact that... I mean, we're nothing special, really, and then there could be, like, so many other scenarios where... Um, like, planets like us, or life forms like us could... could have, um... Been, like... Uh, could have, uh, existed. Or can exist. It's just crazy to think that... There's no sign. Also, another one that I read was just, like, maybe we've seen signs, but we're just too dumb... And that uh, we can't understand <laughs> other aliens. <laughs> Skyper, thank you so much, Rosemary. I love your astronomy streams. Thank you. I'm really, really glad you enjoy it. It's so fun to learn about and even funner to talk with you guys about it. And I also love to learn about, you know, any information that you guys are also willing to share. So thank you so much for the Yanka. Thank you. Thank you, Skyper. Here's my tuition professor. Love <laughs> Pokemon John. Thank you. So did that feel? Uh, we'll have to wait for tomorrow for you to, to do your, your test. Baka, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. I can feel my brain expanding. <laughs> Chara, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Maybe life forms from other parts of the universe. But lights to bring us the information is still traveling and still takes billions of years. That is also something to consider. That is true. Since we know that uh, stuff takes like light years for it to reach us. That's that's definitely a possibility. Oh, thank you to Super Chat. Oh, uh, is this the only planet that has VTubers? <laughs> Probably not. 
that, right? Like, when you look at, like, sci-fi books and stuff, there's always, like, stuff like... Like... Like, like, holographic ladies. <laughs> like, big holographic ladies, right? What's that one movie with that, like... That blue lady? I watched that one movie, I can't remember what it is. I was gonna say cyberpunk, but it's not cyberpunk, that's the game. <laughs> yeah, Blade Runner? Avatar? I think it's Blade Runner, right? It came out like a few years ago. I remember I saw that in the... In the theater. Yeah, 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 there was like a big blue holographic girl. <laughs> This is what I mean. Every single movie has like holographic ladies in it. Actually, I think I remember seeing like two other movies with like the same concept. Have you done some ast astrophotography before? Most current phones can get some nice shots with the right setting. Oh, you mean like taking pictures of like um like stars or like the planets for your phone? Really? I know. Like I used to try taking pictures of the moon before, and it would always look really gross on my phone. Uh, I know, but thank you for the super chat, thank you! Even if we are nothing special, that only makes the things we choose to care about all that more important. You know what? You are so right! <laughs> thank you for the super chat, thank you! Uh, Brian! Bribe to pass it that the test. Here we go, Professor Lovelock. <laughs> thank you so much for the super chat. Okay, I'll, I'll give you an A. I'll give you an A. <laughs> if, if the head of the, the department asks me why so many students have A's, well... They're just all smart. My point of view is that we are the most important things in the universe because we are the ones who are able to observe and give context to it. What if like other... What if like aliens are able to do the same? Are they also... The most important things in the universe? Like to themselves? Like, like you're saying we're the most important things to us, right? Because we're able to look at it? Uh, Dark Forest Theory is basically what happens when you apply the premise of realist international relations theory to the intergalactic realm. Very fun to think about. Like, like where... Where... Basically everyone wants to look out for their own selves and they're they're all like killing each other. <laughs> uh, I was thinking here to super chat. Thank you. Thanks for the stream runs to me. To anyone else spooked by space stuff, Earth is a great place to be. Technology is constantly advancing and life goes on. Don't freak it. Keep your head here on Earth. <laughs> Like Earth is 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 cool, right? Nothing could happen. I mean at least not for now. <laughs> Maybe in a few million of years stuff will happen, but for now we should be safe. Do I read Sabine Ha Hassan Founders Physics Box? Highly recommend. Oh I'll look that up, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, oh, thank you to Super Chat! Um. Oh crap, they're after me! They know I'm too smart! Okay, I think they're gone. I think I scared them away. <laughs> Why was that so loud? Holy moly! Not no too much. <laughs> no, that was like a... I swear that was like a... That was like a cop car or something. I don't know. That was a weird alarm. <laughs> the jigs up, bro. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, let me make sure I didn't meet, miss any super chats. Mysterious, thank you for the super. Thank you, thank you. Wait, at least we lived in the same era as Rusty Misawa. <laughs> Sorry, thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Um, there you go. Uh, Therica, thank you so much for the, the donation. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Professor Lovelock. The final will be a cinch because of your lecture. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Karen, thank you to Supa. We are pretty confident confident that the universe is very close to flat, and the issues are characterizing dark energy and the Hubble tension. Oh no. So you think that the universe is a scary shape? <laughs> Oh 
thank you for the donation. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for the donation. And the universe is expanding. Will it reach a point where it starts shrinking back? Does it create a new Big Bang each time it completely shrinks on itself? How many times has this happened already? Yeah, that's that's so real. That's a real question, isn't it? I don't think I don't. Th I mean, since it's expanding, I'm pretty sure it'll start shrinking. I mean, yeah, that's the common understanding that it will shrink. It'll start shrinking at some point. But does it do this each time? It's a possibility. And it's, it's scary. It's scary to think about. It's scary to think about. I choose to believe that the universe is shaped like a jelly bean? Like a big... Like a big bean? Like a big jelly bean? Um... No, thank you for the donation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, don't want know about it. Thank you for the donation. Thank you so much. Really love hearing you nerd out about space because I also love to nerd out about space. Keep on learning and teaching cool things. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Joel, thank you for the donation. Can't focus on taking notes. The prof is too cute. It's distracting. What are your office hours? <laughs> Joel, thank you. Thank you for the donation. Astronomy is such a great subject and more people need to get into it. Thanks for doing another one of these streams. Noah, thank you so much. Thank you for the donation. Thank you. Now, hope I got... A coffee, thank you for the super chat. Thank you, thank you. I think I got all the donations, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that was, uh, part two of our astronomy class. I hope that you enjoyed it. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed it. Nice classes today, professor. I have to wear them to class so my students will take me seriously. I feel like if I was an actual teacher, that's something I would do. <laughs> Could the universe be shapeless or in constant change? I mean, we know that it's expanding. And at the same rate, in all directions. So it's probably not constantly changing. Is it changing shape? I, I, I mean, I, I mean, that's not... I mean, we know that's not uh, changing uh, changing shape. That's what I meant to say. Oh my god, sorry. Um... Uh... Oh my god, I feel like I'm so out of it right now. Thank you, Rizmi Sama, for an interesting stream. Fluffy, thank you. Thank you for the super chat. I'm glad to learn the forbidden knowledge of the stars. <laughs> um, but yeah, could it be? Could it not be a sheep? I, I don't think so on that one. Yeah. What is outside the universe? Nothing. Something. Do I have a degree? If yes, in what? Um, in being cute. Duh. <laughs> The multiverse? Maybe, maybe. It's the old gods. <laughs> oh yeah, um... So... Sorry, I'm gonna, I wanna stop the space talk now, especially since my brain is really not working. I need to like, talk about like, simple stuff. My brain is just gone today. I was actually thinking of like, pushing this back because I wasn't feeling too good. And I haven't been feeling too good. Um... Just some like minor health issues, but I was like, I, I've been really looking forward to it, so I, I tried to do my best. I hope it wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, maybe I'll go back to my other scene. I'm kind of, ke I'll keep the BGM though. I like this BGM. I like the space lo fi hip hop beats to learn about space too. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, oh yeah, so, so today, um, I, I, I had ordered a single card pack, uh, not card pack, a booster pack of, uh, Magic, Magic the Gathering. Just a single one, and it was like three bucks. I, I didn't want to like really spend money on it because I just, I just kind of felt.
about like opening a pack, right? And I was like, it's three bucks. Who cares? I'll do it, you know? I was like, I want to see some shiny cards. <laughs> I want to see some shiny cards. And I got... Um, I tweeted about it actually, but I got an extra... I guess... I had wanted to buy the Kamigawa uh, pack, but um, they they were actually out of stock, unfortunately. So I got my other favorite um, pack, the Adventures in the Forgotten Realm, which is like the D&D one. Ever heard of SCP-1548? Trippy stuff if true. And thank you for the Astro Talk. When is NASA getting their VTubers? <laughs> Man, oh my god, imagine if I got sponsored by like NASA or something. That would be so cool. SCP-1548, what is that? I have to look it up. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. You play MTG, what format is your favorite? Uh, I play MTG Arena. I play Arena and I just play like standard. Uh, I play standard rotation. I don't... I don't... I've never tried um Challenger or other formats actually. Maybe I will soon. Um. But yeah, uh. <laughs> so, they didn't have any Kamigawa, so I got, um, Adventures in the Forgotten Realm, which is my other favorite, um, expansion. And I actually, they sent me like a, they sent me like a free, um, welcome pack of Kamigawa, which is really nice. Since I guess they didn't have like the normal booster packs, they had like a welcome pack. And, um, so I was opening like the normal pack that I got, right? The... The Adventures in the Forgotten Realm. And I actually got like a pretty... So this pack was like three bucks. And I got a card that's worth like 18 bucks. So technically I made my money back, right? Like I made my money back. So I didn't even like... It was a planeswalker. I got, um, the spider lady planeswalker. Yeah, yeah, yeah! I got a mythic rare. The planeswalker lady. And in the, the Kamigawa Welcome Pack, there's like a lot of like uh, holographic cards. Which is really nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For me, you should interview a bunch of scientists and intellectuals on your stream A plus content. <gasps> that would be so fun. <laughs> I, um, I would love to do that. I'm not sure how feasible it would be. But I would love to do that. Gotta buy more now? That's how you lose money. But what do I do with this card? Do I like sell it? I guess unless I, I put it in my own deck, right? Yeah, I got a bunch of like... Nice holo cards. Which is really nice, so I'm really glad. Um, Yeah, I was actually thinking maybe like opening on stream, but it was just like a single pack. Well, I guess technically two of them. You might want to double sleeve it? I haven't even sleeved them yet. I opened them like before the stream. Really quickly, I was like, I can't wait until after the stream, so I opened them. And I haven't sleeved them yet. <laughs> I know you guys will get upset at me being like, Rose me! How dare you not sleeve these cards? The foil scroll badly? Oh crap! Like Pringles? <laughs> Not sleeping cards? What treason is this? I will... Soon! I promise. I just throw everything into a box. That's what I used to do when I was young. When I was young, whenever I would get cards, I would just like throw them into a box and be like, Okay, you guys are, are chill here. Just stay there forever. <laughs> There's dust on it now. It's okay. It just makes it more valuable. It's like an old antique, you know? It's like an old antique. But yeah, no, actually like having like physical... Like magic cards is like really... Bringing me back. It's really bringing me back. This is why I don't keep my windows open. People are so loud outside! It's the real Zumi dust? Yeah, it's, it's real Zumi dust. So it sells for extra. Just put a brick on top of the foils. <laughs> but yeah, I, I kind of like want to build like a real deck now. I also want to build one for Yu-Gi-Oh, but... I feel like... I guess it's not that expensive if you, if you buy singles, right? Like probably if you're opening a bunch of packs, it'd probably be expensive, but... Mm -hmm. Do I know how to drift? Um... Yeah, in initial D. 
And in Mario Kart, I'm the best drifter. I get the the purple the purple drifting power, you know, where it goes purple. The Dryton deck is really cheap. Wow, thanks. Maybe maybe I should build a Dryton deck then. <laughs> Um, there's also like on the place where I bought the the singular pack, they have like pre pre made decks. If that makes sense, it was like um, uh, it was like what forty bucks or so. Yeah, I was thinking of buying one of those, but I was just like, I don't know if I wanna if I want a real deck yet. Um, but yeah, no, I've been uh, I made a new a new deck in MTGA. It's um. I had my dungeon deck, but now I have like just a simple like dice roll deck. And it's looking a lot better. <laughs> it's still not great, but it's it's looking a lot better than it was before. <laughs> you bought a fifty dollar commander deck from Walmart! I think there were there was also commander decks. Yeah, but I haven't played Commander yet, so. Hmm. No, they're just like, um, I think they're older. I think they're like pretty old. Like, all of them look pretty old. Like, just pre made decks. They seem pretty old. I don't think they're like new at all. Commander is fun. Yeah, Commander, like, I, th I think it's for people or, or something. I think it's for people. I've never tried it though. Definitely buy singles for the best value. If you really wanna. If you really want to get the most value, price check multiple sites including eBay and TCG Player. Good luck. Thank you. I mean, like, I like opening packs also, but like... Realistically, if you want to make a deck just from opening packs, it's basically impossible. <laughs> I mean, unless you spend like a crap ton of money. Which I... Don't know if I'm ready to do yet. I don't know if I'm anywhere near ready. I guess... But maybe I'm lucky. Maybe I'm lucky, so it's fine. You see? I bought I bought a single pack and I got like 10 bucks from it. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's really addicting. I, I love opening card packs. It was one of my favorite things. Like, I remember when I was really young and I had like... No money at all. What I had like no money at all. I had like a few bucks or so, and I would go to like the card store, and I would buy like a single pack, and I'd be like, "Yeah, I'm so excited!" And then I would open it. And I think I told you guys that one time I got like an actual like hollow like pretty decent card, and my brother like scammed it off of me. He was like, "I'll buy it for five bucks," but it was definitely more than five bucks. But when I was like really young, I was like, "Oh, five bucks, let's go!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scanned by my family. It truly... It truly do be like that. He saw it after. I don't even know what he did with it. Yeah, true. Five bucks equals more cards. <laughs> I've actually like, never played like stuff like... Okay, I'm just wondering how you play... Card games in real... How do you play card games in real life? Because I remember when I was young, my brother had like these like... Tokens? Not tokens, like... They were like shiny spheres, like... Well, I guess they were the counters, they were counters. And he would like place them on the cards. Do people still do that? Or like, was that just like a weird thing that my brother did? I don't know. So I feel like if, if I were to go like... Actually play in real life, I wouldn't know what I'm doing and I would... I would look stupid. Oh, it's still coming? What do you do that? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's still done usually with dice. With dice? Huh. I mean, newbies do that. How do you use dice for that? What? Now with dice, but not stones anymore. How do you... Would you put like a dice on your card? Ow! You can even buy fancy ones. Oh! Oh! Six-sided dice, six counters. Hmm... Online sims? Yeah, I, I'm just like... It's... 
I'm like, I feel like I'm too used to like playing card games online now. So like, I don't, I don't know how like playing in real life would be. <laughs> Plus, I don't have any friends who play this kind of stuff. I don't have any friends. And I don't want to look stupid like in front of like if I like if I walk up to some stranger and I'm like, hey, wanna do? <laughs> And then they think I'm like a loser And then I pull out my counters like it's like... In the past And they're like, what's wrong with this girl? Izumi, I just wanted to let you know you helped rekindle my Yu-Gi-Oh love And now I own two decent paper decks Plus we'll be going to play IRL soon, bless you <gasps> Good luck! <laughs> Good luck! Yeah, make their day It's community days for people who are new? What do you mean if I challenge them while riding a motorcycle? Wait, why am I riding a motorcycle now? Walk up to a stranger and challenge them to a duel to assert dominance? But what if they... What if they... What if they look at me weird? What if they think I'm some like weirdo? Which I'm not. I'm not some weirdo. I'm actually very cute. And very down to earth. And... and you know, I'd go even as far as saying that that some people call me Miss Universe or my big universe brain. <laughs> I'm not weird. Um, actually, not like n not like IRL. Like, in fact, that's I feel like I'm too conscious about like how I act IRL that I. Try unless I'm with like really close friends, then I like I can't. That's that's why I can't just go up and like play card games because I think about it too much and I'm like I would look weird if I do that, so I don't do it. Holding hiding my power level, basic. I mean not not really. It's just I'm uncomfortable about it, so I don't do it. I'm uncomfortable about it, so I don't do it. You know, I know that weird is fun, and that's why I like weird people, but like... But like, I, I'm too conscious and like, shy to do it myself. And I said my... I'm the same as online? Yeah, that's what Anna and like, uh, Elira and, and Millie said. But like... Again, I'm, I'm like, pretty close with them, right? I mean, even though that was the first time I actually saw them face to face, but like, I'm I'm close with them, so like, you know. Is it me off topic? But do you know, with the Fate franchise, what class do you think you would be summoned into if you were a heroic spirit? Oh. Um. Aren't all like the cute girls foreigners? Could I be a foreigner? <laughs> Caster? I'm a caster? Oh, thank you for joining. Welcome. Really? The cute girls are all the classes. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> I'm a berserker! Come on! Aren't foreigners eldritch abominations? No... Not me... Resume out there? Resume out there? Resume out there? Would be like... Dark Sumi. We're like... Wait... Yeah... <laughs> yeah! Rizmi was seated in the blackout envy, therefore maybe foreigner. Right? It fits, it fits! Actual black rose. <laughs> Really? 
Really resume would be cool also, I feel. Resume after is what a city was supposed to be? <sighs> resume level up class berserker noble phantasm I wanna break it free. <laughs> and the fun thank you to Supa, thank you. Rosemary with the ruler? What about me? What about me? Am my free of the table? No, it's my own table. I do what I want here in in my house. I put my feet on my table if I want to. <laughs> I'm actually... I don't know how to say this. You guys are gonna hate me if I say this. Whenever I'm in my parents' car, I'm like... And, and I'm in the front. You know, when you're... What's it called? When you're riding shotgun. I'm, I'm one of those people. I always like... <laughs> so I just put on my feet on the front. On the front. Is ice cream and coffee a thing now? Yeah, it's called affogato, bro! You never heard of it? What do you mean, ill? Don't ill me, you're ill. I know, I know, I know it's very dangerous. I know it's dangerous. My parents always tell me that they're right. First, me, don't put your feet up, it's dangerous. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had an avocado. I don't think I have, actually. I don't know if I have. Oh, I got a... I got a really, like, delicious, um... I was working on... On, like, some last stuff for the... The astronomy stream today, and I got a... Jeez, my brain is so slow today. I got um, a sakura green tea latte. It was so good. And usually, like, I'm not too big a fan of, like, sakura. I mean, it depends. It depends on the stuff. Also, it depends on how they make it. But it was so good. And then I don't know how to tell, how, tell you guys this. I was walking back with it and I dropped it. <laughs> At least I, I drank, like, 60% of it, so... I drank, like... The majority of it, but I dropped it. Yeah, I was actually really sad about that. And then I was walking back home. And then all of a sudden, my brain was like, Wait, where's my latte? And then I was like, oh yeah, I dropped it like the idiot I am. Gravity strikes again. If I was in space, and I dropped my drink, I could catch it. Maybe this is a sign for me to become an an astronaut. Yeah, maybe I should become an astronaut. I blocked out of my memory basically. <laughs> Resume Space Engineer Stream 1? <gasps> what if that was like the sequel to Space Cop, Space Engineer? <laughs> Your spaceship isn't working any... Oh my god, wait, I feel like the, the juices of creativity is flowing in my brain now. Like, your your spaceship stops working, so you go, you go to the mechanic. You go to the mechanic, and then the Space Engineer Resume is there. <laughs> Let's go! I can work with this! I can work with this! If you ever become an astronaut, we'll have a space stream? <sighs> I wanna do something cool like that. Like a space stream. Maybe one day? Like, I've been to, like, quite a bit of, like, museums. Like, uh, like in, in different countries and stuff. And I've been in a few museums with, like, actual, like, space... Like, uh... Oh, thank you for rejoining, welcome! Um, and, and, like, imagine... Maybe if I could, like... Take a video from inside of one of it. And, like, show it during my stream. That would be so cool. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe one day I'll get to do something like that. <laughs> NASA club. <laughs> Yo, guys. Hey, what's up? It's me, Rose. Me, I'm here live streaming from the NASA headquarters. Where's the NASA he headquarters? Is it in Houston? Is that why they say Houston we have a problem? Or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think something like that would be really fun. London Science Museum. Have I been to the, the one in London? I've been to a few museums in London. I can't remember which ones I've been to though. Was it Florida? Because I remember something about Florida, but I'm like, isn't it in Houston? Houston is mission control. Ah! Oh! Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> Summer doesn't need it for unmanned development and others for astronauts. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But Houston has the astronauts there. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Thank you, thank you. Florida is very petan. <laughs> You got to go to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida near Orlando. Now I have to go. Now I wait. Is it? It's open to the public, right? Now I gotta go. Gosh darn it! You can see the rocket from where you live. Oh my, that's so cool. And to become Florida man, I might have to become a Florida man to go visit this the space the space uh It's really cool now I gotta go I want to go to Florida Brave <laughs> It's not that bad It's not that bad right Aren't there like um isn't there like 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 gators? In like, in like random like... Areas like all around Florida? How do you live? Don't, how do you not die to like... The gators? <laughs> I know, I feel like if I went to Florida for even a few minutes, I'd turn into Kenny. There's gators at the airport? Oh, just don't swim anywhere, gotcha. They're nice and they stay in the swamps? But what if you come... Like, what if you walk next to like a... Like a... Like a watery swamp or something? A watery swamp? <laughs> what if you walk next to it and then they like... And then they freak it and then they bite your leg off? They're cute, are they? They run away from you, that's kinda cute! Gator... Florida... Holy crap, they're huge! Oh wait, that's 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 their like uh sports team, the Florida Gators. I didn't even know that. Holy crap, why are they so huge? They look like miniature dinosaurs! What the heck? How are these cute? They're ginormous! And why are they on like golf the go Why are they on the golf courses? Do, do they are they just on the golf courses? They're older than dinosaurs? Yeah, but like... They like to play golf? I don't know if you guys are messing with me. How do they play golf? They're, they're alligators. They're known for their golfing... What? Kami Oshi with Rosemi Lovak has ended. Now can he see me... Both locks is my new guy. <laughs> because he's being cute. <laughs> Fun fact, Florida man beat up an alligator in order to save his puppy. For real? Is this real? I feel like this is real. Thank you, the super chat, Ari. Gator golf is an actual thing. Oh yeah, like in FNAF, right? <laughs> like, like Monty the Gators... Wait, is that why it's Monty the Gators golf course? Holy crap. No way. Wait, is this actually a thing? Gator golf? The 
wander into the golf courses. That's actually really scary. I don't think I want to be a Florida man anymore. Monty is from Florida? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> oh yeah, before 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 I end the stream, I wanna I'll talk a bit about my schedule this week. Let me talk about my schedule. Trouble in Terrace Town. Um, it's a club with a few other people in Ian, so I'm excited for that. Um, it's gonna be the Gary's Mod version. Um, and and later on at night, I'll be playing off uh, Naf4, which I'm kind of excited to play, kind of scared, but kind of excited at the same time. Um, Jake is me. <laughs> So yeah, I'm excited to play the fourth game. I really, I just wanna like, I feel like whenever I play a FNAF game, I'm like, I gotta play all the FNAF games. So my mistake was playing FNAF last week, cause now I feel like I have to play all the FNAF games. <laughs> yeah, the the fourth one is the the one in the house. Um, I did clear, I believe, a night of it last time, but I really wanna clear the game. So that's what I'll be doing. Um. You ready to lose my ability to hear? Not just yet. Yeah, I have to play the RPG one. Um, I, I might stream TTQ. I'm not sure, but I think I might. Um, and then yeah, there's gonna be the FNAF one. Um, and then after uh on Thursday, um, well, I want to say morning, but more like afternoon. I'll be playing Ring Fit. Um, it's been a while and I need to get back into it, so I figured why not. I've been wanting to play it for a while, so I'll be playing- I'll be doing some Ring Fit. Uh, hopefully I'm feeling better by then. If not, I'll let you guys know for sure, though. So. Mm. Uh, and then after, uh, Thursday night, I'll be playing Devar with... Basically, Lazulite. Okay, so here's how this happened. Here's how this happened. Finana was like, anyone want to play Devour? Preferably, like, people with experience. And I'm like, yeah, I'll play, I'll play Devour, like, quite a bit, like, a few times. Um, I think there's, like, a new map or something. I'm not even sure. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll play with you, Finana. And then after, Pomo was also like, yeah, I'll play with you, Finana. And then after, um, Finana was like, alright, anyone else want to join? And then Alira was like, oh, if you have no one else, I, I'll join. See, then I'm like, and then after Alira joined, and then I'm like, wait a second. Isn't this just me and all of Lazulite? <laughs> but like, I'm pretty sure. Was it Devour? I think last time I played Devour was with all of Lazulite again. Am I crazy? Was it another game? I feel like it was. I'm part of last. I told you guys, I'm like the the secret agent. I'm like part of every single group, every single wave of new GN at this point. <laughs> Am I part of Etheria or last? I'm not part. Of Listen, Etheria. I just I, I I love their song. I gotta keep it on all the time. I gotta channel my inner weird Etheria, yeah, energy. But I feel like at this point, like I'm actually being like. Like Lazulide, they're they're taking me. They're... And I didn't even try for it to be like <laughs> I'm like liquid I fit into any group? Do I? Um but yeah, and then on Friday it'll be uh the craft game um that was organized last week. Uh, during the golf stream, it'll be with some Ian and some other people, so I'm really excited for that. I love crab game. I love meeting new friends. So I'm excited for that. On Saturday, there'll be the part two of the tournament. Um, yeah, there'll be the part two of the Yu Gi Oh tournament, so I'm excited for that too. And 
Sunday, maybe a gorilla. It'll depend. I'll, I'll, I'll see. I'll see how I feel. Mm -hmm. I'm the protagonist of Niji Sanji Ian. I don't know about protagonist, but you remember that one time, like when people like googled like Niji Sanji Ian and it like showed my picture. It was like Niji Sanji Ian musical group, and then it showed my picture on Google. <laughs> Remember that, right? That was wild. <laughs> Real to me is Nichi Sanji. <laughs> oh yeah, um Oh, here you go. There was like something. I actually I, I wasn't familiar with it. It's the first time I heard about it. But there was like this thing where you could like place pixels. And and I think it was like basically like each person could place one pixel or something. And it was um I think it was like a Reddit thing or something. I'm not too sure. And 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 then I, I went to look. I went to look. Um apparently I didn't even know it was getting like removed or whatever. I, I think. I think that's what happened. I think it was getting removed. And I like just so happened to be there like the moment it was getting removed. And I looked and then I saw myself and I'm like, oh, that's me. I took a picture of it, but I think I'm missing I'm missing a few pixels here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I mean someone or probably more than one a bunch of people drill me. So thank you for making me a pixel on on that canvas. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> is that portrait to scale? Yeah, this is like... Look, you can replace me like this. With, with, with the legs, too. <laughs> with the legs, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, that was something that I found really cool. Here we go. Um... Yeah, thanks sir, for including me in that. I was really, really happy to see it. Thank you. <laughs> 2 point oh wow upgrade. Let's go! Pixel Rosary! <laughs> um, and yeah, thank you for coming to my astronomy stream. I hope you enjoyed it. I was really happy to be able to do a sequel. Sorry if my brain was sort of like not there today. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um... Yeah! It was a wrench you think? Yeah! Thank you, thank you! I'll definitely... Try it... I feel like if I were to do another one, it would get like really complicated. It would be like... Here's this equation... <laughs> but maybe... Sometime... In the future. Thank you for watching! And I hope you enjoyed it! And I will see you... Tomorrow for the TTT collab. Um, again, if I'll stream it, the waiting room will be up. If not... He... <laughs> I was like, wait, what do I say? If not, what? And I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna say he. And I was like, he... Why did I have to narrate that? I don't, okay, you know what? I don't know what's wrong with my brain. Anyways, uh... Hope you have a great evening. <laughs> hope you have a great evening. Um... Or a great day. Stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you tomorrow. If not for the TTT for the FNAF stream, so I'll see you then. Thank you. So I'm sorry, star. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'll see you then. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you for all the super chats and donations, by the way. And have a great day or evening. Bye bye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.